All right, so we're checking out the Doogie S98 smartphone, and I uh, haven't done a review on a uh, Chinese smartphone in a pretty long time. Um, for the most part, they, the ones I did be reviews on before, they weren't that great, although they were fairly inexpensive. This one comes in around the $300 to $350 mark, which is not bad for something that you, you just buy and add your own service versus uh, some of those that you would um, get as part of a service plan. So then we'll talk about the pros and the cons of this phone, who it might be for, and who it probably isn't going to be for. But you know, first let's talk about what you get in the box. So obviously you get the phone, you get a wall charger here, 33 watts of uh, fast USB-C charging, a USB-C charging cable also works for data. Um, you do get uh, your documentation, and this one does come with an extra screen protector. And while this does have Corning uh, Gorilla Glass for the main display, you can see there's a screen protector pre-installed on here. And um, I'm not sure if it's some sort of a glass screen protector or not, but it's, it doesn't seem like it, it is um, plastic, but it does, it probably might be plastic. It, I guess the quality of the screen protector is pretty good. I didn't get any scratches on it, and it feels really nice in terms of a screen protector. It feels like glass. Uh, it doesn't affect the brightness of the screen at all. Um, but, you know, let's take a look around the phone here. So this is, uh, I guess, what you would call a rugged phone. Um, don't mistake this to be indestructible. It does have a uh, IP68 uh, waterproof rating and uh, water resistance rating and IP69K drop rating so I think it can be dropped uh, or waterproof up to one and a half meters for about 30 minutes and I think it can be dropped from a certain distance I'll put up on the screen here uh, a lot of specs here I'll cover all that but yeah I wouldn't um, categorize this as indestructible I think that because it's got such a large screen the 6.3 inch display uh, you hit this hard enough drop it from far enough high enough it will break uh, but you know this is you know, they're marketing this as a rugged phone for probably some of those environments where you, it's going to maybe take a little bit more abuse than a traditional phone and you want something that's going to last and you know, also not cost, cost you a ton of money uh, in case it does get destroyed. But I think in terms of getting dropped, because of the way this phone is constructed, um, there's like a lot of plastic here in the corners. This is where typically... The display is breaking so it's kind of rounded off a little bit here and so then when you do drop it on the corner t typically this corner gets shattered but with extra you know plastic here to protect it it should survive as the, the, the drop rating does indicate the frame itself is aluminum this metal part here um, on the sides so they got basically aluminum on each side uh, you got your um, on off button right there your volume rocker here and your fingerprint reader here and then on this side you have a custom button you can program to whatever you want you got your um, sim card tray and this actually is a dual sim card tray so you can have two different um, cell services on here if you, you can switch if you want um, the the um, SD card can go up to 512 gigabytes. The internal RAM in here, memory is 8 gigabytes, and uh, onboard storage is 256 gigabytes. So, very uh, good storage, very good speed. The uh, CPU in here is the MediaTek Helio G96 with the Mali G57 GPU. Pretty decent specs in terms of, like, you know, it's not like a Snapdragon or any of the mainstream. SOCs out there, but when comparing the benchmarks of this, uh, the Antutu benchmark, to like say my daily driver here, this is my um, a Samsung uh, Note 20 Ultra. This phone costs uh, quite a bit more, uh, well over a thousand dollars, and this one's about 300 to 350. But just comparing the raw benchmark scores, um, the Doogie is around a 340 on Antutu, and the Note 20 Ultra is about a 667. So it's not quite up there in terms of raw speed, but in terms of you know your daily, um, you know using it for daily uh, productivity, web browsing, email, that kind of stuff, no problem. If you're using it for a little bit of light gaming, uh, 
pretty decent graphics. I mean, I, I, I was able to play some some games on here, no problem. I think on some higher end games, you might have some issues, but uh, for most light gaming, it's going to be totally fine. And uh, the display is a 6.3 inch diagonal display, 1080 by uh, 2,340 2, tall. And it's got one of these, uh, if you look, it's going to be hard to see, but bring down the display here. It's got like this little area for the front camera, and it's probably going to show up better in, in like the browser. Here we go. So if you bring up the browser, you can see how the display, uh, the actual display there just kind of curves around that front camera, which is, uh, by the way, I think it's a 16 megapixel front camera. On the back here, uh, you have a bunch of other cameras. You have a 64 megapixel main camera, a 20 megapixel night camera, and then you also have a wide angle camera here. So you have three cameras here in the back, got your flashlight here. And then this little display here, it looks like a watch display. If you double tap on that, it actually does bring up a watch. You can actually use this for an executable display, uh, things like your calls. And also you can use this for um, media playback. Like for example, if you're playing back some audio, you know, uh, fast forward, track back, etc. And this is adjustable in your settings if you want to change the look of the display. But yeah, it's kind of nice, you know, um, you know, this, uh, in terms of it being durable here, like this, this part here around the whole camera is uh, all metal as well. So you, you might get scratched if you're, um, you know, hitting something hard because it is metal, but then the rest of the stuff is all plastic here. You can see you know, on the bottom here, you've got your, uh, USB, uh, C port. So it is waterproof, of course. So there's a little gasket there around the port cover so you can use that for charging and it does have wireless charging as well so if you have one of those um, wireless fast chargers it can charge up to 15 watts uh, using the wireless charger which is what I typically charged with then you know take the little cover off the bottom here but if you want to fast charge via the USB-C it does have 33 watt uh, USB-C fast charging so this thing can charge up very fast even though like uh, the battery is really huge and this one's a 6,000 milliamp hour battery I think it's like three times larger than my other phone. Uh, so you get several days of, of power on time on this one, um, for sure. So, it's, you know, again, this is like, you know, I think a specialty type of phone for certain situations, not something you wanna, may want to use all the time because with the huge battery and the big display and the all the metal and the plastic on here to protect everything, it is fairly uh, on the heavy side. So uh, probably not... A, the best for something if you want to use it as a daily driver where it's going to be kind of light. Um, audio in here is so so because there's only one speaker here and of course they have it for, um, kind of waterproofed as well uh, so that water can't get in so the audio isn't the best. Okay so now in terms of the quality of the display it's quite bright and quite visible outdoors. Uh, it's high enough resolution it's not super high resolution but it's totally fine for watching videos and uh, obviously things like browsing the web and a little bit of light game playing. There are really no issues, I have really no issues with the display compared to some of the displays on these uh, budget phones from a few years ago. It's uh, actually quite remarkable that there's a displays of this quality and at this price point, I'm actually pretty surprised that the displays are as good as they are. But yeah, just looking at something like a Chrome browser, you know, you can see how easily things scroll, speed and responsiveness is uh, pretty decent on this one, really no issues on the responsiveness of the screen and also how fast things update and display. Okay, so those are some of the good things. Now let's talk about some of the negative things about this one. So the uh, internal radio in this one and the networks that it can communicate on are fairly limited compared to a lot of other phones that are sold in the US. It works fine with my T-Mobile service, but it on the uh, basically on the product spec page, it says that it's not compatible with any of the CDMA type services like Verizon or Sprint or some of the examples that they noted. So be aware that if you are looking at this phone, if you're using any of those uh, services that are basically listed as incompatible, it won't work with those those services. The other downside with this phone is while it does have all of these nice cameras on here, you know, 20 megapixels, 64 megapixels, etc. Uh, the quality of the images on here are just sort of average at best, I would say, compared to a lot of um, phones out there. And I think that's where the, they are basically saving some money here in terms of the cost. Uh, no 4K video, which is kind of surprising in this day and age. 
but I've found that a lot of the budget phones don't have that anymore, um, which is strange. I guess it has decent 1440p video, so it does up to 2.5K video, 1440p, on the main camera, um, which is okay video. It's not the best dynamic range. You know, again, I'm you know considering the cost compared to my main driver uh, phone, which costs four times as much. Uh, of course, that, that that camera is much much better. But yeah, if you're looking for a phone that has a high quality um, video or camera system, uh, photos and videos, this is definitely not going to be your top choice. The photos and videos are passable if you're just sharing things on Instagram or Facebook. They're okay but anything you know if you want anything a bit nicer 4k video high bit rate this phone definitely wouldn't qualify in that category anyway in my opinion uh, this phone is going to be really for those guys that are uh, looking for a phone that has a long battery life you know, decent performance all around a decent display but not looking for the best uh, camera or cameras and also something that's going to survive maybe a little bit more abuse than your typical phone um, this is probably going to be a pretty good price point for you, around 300 to 350 Maybe as a phone for like, uh, you know, maybe like a teenager, someone that's uh, you know not not necessarily needing the top end phone, but just needs something a little bit more rugged. Something maybe you know maybe even for like kids, just uh, temporarily, you know, you know, you know, in case you uh, worried that they might drop your phone. This is not bad for playing like you know games and stuff like that. This is going to be totally fine with that and it can handle a little bit more abuse from like a kid so you know that's probably what i'm thinking which is probably going to be best for um, but if you're looking for a main phone for your everyday use uh it's going to have the, the top end cameras and that kind of stuff you're going to still have to look at some of those you know more expensive flagship phones that are going to be costing quite a bit more than this one at least probably double the cost and if you're looking especially for like you know for the for the uh, cameras that are sort of in the top end Anyway, that's my opinion on this one. You know, check it out. You know, the price varies depending on where you get it at. I think AliExpress and Amazon are typically around the same price. Sometimes they have coupons, sometimes they don't. There might be a discount code in the video description. Depending on which store you buy it at, I'll put those down in the video description at some point. Um, it may not be there now, but it could be there later. And yeah, it's, a, you know, for the price, 300 350 and if you're okay with some of the limitations, it's not a bad price for this phone. I thought the quality of it all around was pretty decent and I haven't had any problems with it. I've, I've actually been using it as my daily driver temporarily for the past week. It hasn't had any weird like reboots or crashes. It's been actually pretty solid all around and I've been able to do most of the stuff that I normally do with my phone except for the things like, you know, shooting pictures and, and videos, which is the biggest downside again, as I mentioned earlier. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Let me know if you got any questions about this one down in the comment section below and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.